Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here. Well, we have a massive update with Michelle Obama and her decision on whether or not she's running for president in 2024. We are also exposing the truth about Michelle Obama. Even Donald John Trump has spoken about the Obamas and uh, he's given his thoughts on whether she's, you know, going to be running for 2024 as well. And just with everything going on between the Obamas and the, uh, the Bidens, because uh, even Donald Trump has exposed the truth about what's really taking place in the White House. Because if you have been uh, paying attention, the uh, Barack Obama has been spending a considerable amount of time in the White House, which is very concerning to me because this is a man that I do not like. And this is uh, most certainly not our president. Right. However, Joe Biden, being Obama's former vice president, obviously still looks up to Obama in one way or another. And so rightfully, well, not really. <laughs> well, anyways, he's influencing Joe Biden one way or another, which, again, is deeply concerning for me. So we're going to get into exposing the truth about Michelle Obama and about Barack Obama in today's video but before we do we are going to read the bible because god comes first amen comment amen down below if you believe that god comes first let's take a listen to the word of god and then let's dive in let's pray because we could all use some more prayer amen all right here is psalm 91 he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him, because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Comment amen, guys. How beautiful is that? God is with us, so we do not need to fear says that right here in scripture. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Can't help but to think of those bullets flying past Donald Trump's face. God was protecting him in that moment. And I love that, the last line of that. It says, when he calls to me, I will answer him, be with him in trouble, rescue him, honor him. I will satisfy him with long life, show him my salvation. I will deliver him, protect him. And all God asks, guys, and he will hold fast to you in love. All God asks of you is to, to call to him and know his name. That's it. Call to God and know God's name. And he gives you all these promises. God is too good to us. <laughs> so let's dive into this update with Michelle Obama. All right, so here's our first clip. Donald Trump exposing the truth about Obama and Joe Biden in this new exclusive interview with Jesse Waters, J.D. Vance, and Donald John Trump. Let's tune in. Barack Obama still plotting against you, trying to take you out. Uh, they got some big problems over there. First of all, Obama hates Biden, and Biden hates Obama. And when Obama walked Biden out a couple of weeks ago off the stage, he didn't have to do that. He could have let him wave to the people a little bit longer. I don't know if Joe knew who he was waving to, but he was waving. And all of a sudden, Obama comes along, grabs him. Come on, Joe. Like he was a child. It made him look so bad. And I know people with Biden. I know people with Obama. And they were not happy about that. It made him look really bad, like a child. 
like a child. They don't like each other. And I think that it's pretty tough. This guy got, what, 14, 15 million votes? Delegates, he had the votes. So he goes through a process, he gets them. And the whole thing has been a con. Look, when they kept him in the basement in the first, those people should be looked at because they lied to the American public. So this is the clip of that Donald Trump is talking about with Barack Obama um, walking Joe out of this rally and really showing America that Barack Obama, I mean, it, it was completely embarrassing for Joe Biden. He grabs him and walks him out of this event. I mean, it's, a, it's an event for Joe Biden that he brought in Bill Clinton of all people. Look at Barack, he, he goes, this is the end of the event. Joe Biden's looking at everyone, he goes, come on, get out of here, let's go. And Joe Biden just follows him like a, like a little sheep, you know, let's, uh, let's go. He's herding the, she herding the horses, herding the horses, herding the cows over. <laughs> and also, by the way, Look at, listen to this clip of Barack Obama. It's super, super strange. Twits, looking through the stuff, and then I could sort of deliver the lines, but somebody else was uh, doing all the talking and ceremony. Wow. I, I'd be fine. People would ask me, knowing what you know now, do you wish like you had a, sec a, a third term? Um, and I, I used to say, you know what? If, if I could make an arrangement where... Um, I had a, I had a, a stand in a front man or front woman and, and they had an earpiece in and I was just in my basement in my sweats mm. looking through the stuff and then I could sort of deliver the lines but somebody else was uh, doing all the talking and ceremony wow. I, I'd be fine really weird really weird really sick man Barack Obama which by the way I've always wondered why the term limits on president is uh two terms but pete you got people like chuck schumer and nancy pelosi who and mitch mcconnell they've been working in congress for you know god knows how long why can chuck schumer you know chuck schumer serve nine terms in the u.s house of representatives and then he served what another He's the longest serving U.S. Senator from New York. He's also served another, I believe, like four, I want to say three or four term, another terms in the Senate. I mean, this dude has literally been working in politics for 49 years. He's coming up on his 50th anniversary. Very, very strange. Now, let's tune in to Donald Trump exposing or talking about a potential run against Kamala or Michelle. So they're going to cook up something at the convention. They might throw Gretchen Whitmer at you. They might throw Gavin Newsom at you. They might throw Michelle Obama at you. Yeah, I wouldn't be worried about any of them. Look, they have bad policies. Forget about the people. They have an open border policy. They have a high tax policy. They have a bad military policy. The whole world is going woke. Their world is going woke. Uh, the Green News scam, we're spending all our money on things that don't work. The whole thing is a mess. Our country, if we don't win this election... We I mean, Donald John Trump, guys, he, he literally came out and said, I wouldn't be worried about any of them. And yet you have Chuck Schumer saying the Trump t Vance ticket is extreme. I mean, Chuck Schumer, I don't understand why people still like this guy. He's so sick in the... <laughs> I just don't like him at all. I don't want to say anything that's going to get me in trouble. But, I mean, this dude... Come on, since 1975, he's been working for the Democrats. It's like, give it up, brother. And this is the man literally running the Senate. Most people don't even know who he is. Like most everyday folks, like all my friends, I would, you know, most, I don't think any of my friends really know who Chuck Schumer is. People who don't watch politics, but it's like, if they realize that this guy, I mean, look at him. He only one, only one of his eyes fully open. Okay. Now, we do have some updates with the Obamas and Kamala Harris. Let's tune in, guys. It was just moments ago, Vice President Kamala Harris picked up the formal endorsement of former President Barack Obama and Michelle Obama as well. Here is the brand new video. Kamala. Hello. Hi. 
Hi. Hey there. <laughs> so staged, by the way. They just happen to have this super fancy camera, uh, you know, on Kamala Harris. Oh yeah, let's set up this fifty thousand dollar camera setup and lighting with on you while you're walking. Here, let's have the Obamas call you real quick. Kamala. Hello. Hi. Hey there. Oh, hi. You're both together. Oh, it's good to hear you both. I, I I can't have this phone call without saying to my girl Kamala, I am proud of you. This is going to be historic. We called to say Michelle and I couldn't be prouder to endorse you and to do everything we can to get you through this election. And also, why is she holding up the phone to her face if it's on speaker? <laughs> this woman's an idiot. <laughs> or it's just so staged. It's like they have the Obama's recording, yet she's holding up her... Is she even listening to anything? I'm confused. Into the Oval Office. Oh my goodness. Michelle, Brock, this means so much to me. I am looking forward to doing this with the two of you, Doug and I both, and um, getting out there, being on the road. But most of all, I just want to tell you the, the words you have spoken and the friendship that you have given over all these years mean more than I can express. So thank you both. She like barely knows how to hold a phone. Why is she holding her phone like so? I've never seen someone hold a phone like, like this. Like she just looks awkward holding a phone. And by the way, I, why are there so many edits, like cuts? Like, first, first she's walking here. Hey there. And then she's here in this room, and now she's outside by a car? Like, could they not do this all, like, I don't want, why is this phone call so edited together? I mean, it seems weird how she's holding up a phone to her ear and it's on speaker do everything we can to get you through this election and into the Oval Office. Oh my goodness. Michelle, Brock, this means so much to me. I am looking forward to doing this with the two of you, Doug and I both. And what do you mean doing this with the two of you? Is she going to pick Michelle Obama to be her VP or something? And um, getting out there, being on the road. But most of all, I just want to tell you the the words you have spoken and the friendship that you have given over all these years mean more than I can express. So thank you both. It means so much. And um, and we're going to have some fun with this too, aren't we? Ah, oh, sick! So this is not unexpected, but could be a bit awkward for Donald Trump this morning. Overnight, his campaign said it would not commit to debating Harris, in part because she had not been endorsed by Obama. Well, now she has. With us now, CNN senior White House correspondent Kayla Tausche. Kayla, again, not unexpected, but kind of shows this tight rollout that Harris has had over the last now, this is what, the sixth day. Yeah. I've heard, well, I heard that Kamala Harris might pick a woman to be her VP. That would be a kind of a strong choice for her. So I think she might either pick Hillary Clinton or Michelle Obama to be her VP because. Keep in mind, Kamala Harris, she's very, she's a very new uh, public person since uh, Joe Biden picked her. I mean, before Joe Biden picked her to be his VP, I, did, I never heard of this woman. I don't think most of you guys ever heard of Kamala. So it's like, I think she does, and she hasn't really, I mean, done too much. If anything at all, she's kind of just been in the background this whole time and now all of a sudden she steps up. So it's like, I feel like Democrats aren't really that excited for Kamala, if you guys know what I mean. Yes, John, highly choreographed, even though all of this came together in the 11th hour over just the last week, this was a critical piece for Vice President Harris to get the endorsement from a party leader who still has influential sway across the entirety of the Democratic Party. Uh, it was... Uh, it These edits are like <laughs> confusing the heck out of me. Why is she walking and then all of a sudden she's in another room. She's holding up the phone to her face, but it's on speaker. Do you real? Nobody, I have never in my life done a speaker phone without going like this. Does anybody do speaker phone and you hold it up to your ear? It's on speaker. It literally shows there's a white dot that that's the speaker phone button. She actually using an Android or is that an iPhone? I don't even know.
it, it's not uh, it shouldn't be understated the fact that um, this came on uh, several days after her candidacy became official, but also after the official process uh, to clinch those delegates came through. As sources have said that uh, the Obamas didn't want to be seen as anointing uh, Vice President Harris or as seen as part of a coronation in the words of one at uh, choosing instead to wait until after some of those processes has pl have played out. Uh, but certainly it is going to uh, provide uh, quite a bit more momentum for a campaign that has already seen quite a bit of that. One hundred and twenty six million dollars raised as of Tuesday. The campaign has not hundred who, who in their right mind would donate over one hundred million dollars to Kamala Harris. Give me a break. You guys know that in the Finnish language, Kamala means horrible. <laughs> Literally, Kamala's name means horrible. Is that not a sign that if I've ever seen one or not? Hey, what is your president? Pre oh, gosh, I can't even imagine if she wins. It's going to be quite literally. It's going to be so gnarly. Um, by the way, Ted Cruz thought that they would bring in Michelle Obama. Let's tune into this. The Biden administration. I think he is already the puppet master. I think the odds of Michelle Obama parachuting in in August of 2024 have risen dramatically. So they thought, or Ted Cruz thought that Joe Biden, he predicted Joe Biden was going to drop out and they were going to bring in Michelle. In August of 2024, the Democrat kingmakers jettison Joe Biden and parachute in Michelle Obama. I mean, he's not far off his prediction. I, when he said this, a lot of people were just laughing at him. Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz was nearly correct. They, they, you know, jettisoned out Joe Biden, but instead of Michelle Obama, you know, she said, "Oh, I don't want the job. I don't want the job." Even her team says. Uh, that she didn't want the job, but now it's like they're bringing in Kamala instead. And this woman, she's sick. She even is talking about how much she likes to smoke, how much she liked to smoke pot. Why would I hide that? She, this is a weird woman with weird logic. Listen in. You even write about smoking pot. Now you didn't go into great detail, but you you didn't you could have left that out. So why'd you why'd you talk about that? That was what I did. Michelle Obama. <laughs> this woman is so weird. She goes, that's what I did. When I was a kid, I inhaled. That was the point. I did Um So it's super weird because listen. Part of the becoming story. Everybody had something that they had to work through, something that they were figuring out. Why would I hide that Ooh. from the next generation? So she's literally admitting that she didn't want to hide that from the next generation. Well, I don't know if, you know, that's such a good look because you're both of your daughters, quite literally the next generation of people that you birthed, grew up to be chain smokers. So maybe you should change your mind that you maybe you should hide that from the next generation. Maybe you shouldn't co go out and smoke in front of your children or not hide that from your children because I don't know if they got how much secondhand smoke they got, but when you're smoking inside your car, you know, your car reeks of cigarettes. Again, you know, this is obviously totally legal, but it's just, it's, it's a not a good habit. Smoking is quite literally the stupidest thing you could do. And for you to be so proud, Michelle Obama, so proud to, oh yeah, why would I hide that from the next generation? It's like, you're proud that you're, both your children grew up to be chain smokers? It's weird to me. And I don't, you know, I don't blame the kids at all. I blame the parents. You cannot blame the kids at all because... If you grew up with your mo with your mom smoking and both and your dad smoking, Obama actually said smoking pot is no more dangerous than drinking. Did he actually say that? President Obama President Barack Obama says smoking pot is no more dangerous than drinking, but calls it a bad idea of it a push for legalization in several states. Super strange because we also know that Barack Obama admitted to smoking in the White House 
what, eight or nine? He smoked in the White House a lot to cope with his stress. And he tried to give it up, but he couldn't. He, the White House stress had him smoking eight or nine cigarettes a day, and that's just what he, that's just what he told the public. Oh yeah, I smoked around eight or nine a day. I wouldn't be surprised if it was quite more than that. So it's like both of them are smokers. They don't think anything's wrong with it, but it's like, how many people die per year from smoking? According to the CDC, smoking kills more than 480,000 Americans each year, which is about one in five deaths. Smoking is the leading cause of preventable death, disability, and disease in the US. It also causes more deaths each year than all US wars combined. So it's like smoking, I know I'm really harping in on this, but guys, it's like smoking is so bad for you. And I understand if you're, if you're older and you smoke because it's like you probably started smoking and you were exposed to smoking before we were aware that it was bad. But now that we are aware that it's bad, why would you not mind the next generation, your children, to be smokers? Why would you not mind for them to know that it's all part of the becoming story? Oh yeah, it's all part of the becoming story. Which now you have the Obama signing a multi, multi-million dollar deal with Netflix because to showcase, I mean, I'll just tune into this, listen. Uh, I wanna get back to the editorial that I offered at the top of the hour. Uh, it was about President Obama former President Obama, may be doing a deal with Netflix to come up with conversations about issues going forward. Joining us now is Fox News contributor Tammy uh, and president of the Independent Women's Voice. So the Obamas signed this multi-million dollar deal with Netflix. And they're getting paid millions and millions of dollars to produce these films on Netflix, by the way, I canceled my Netflix subscription. Highly recommend you consider doing so as well. One of the co-founders just donated $7 million to a super PAC that supports uh, Kamala Harris, by the way. I don't know if you guys know this, but a lot of people are actually starting to cancel their um, Netflix subscription because the Netflix co-founders, massive Kamala Harris donation, um, you know, a lot of people don't like that. Reed Hastings made a donation worth $7 million for a super PAC backing Harris's presidential campaign. Anyways, Barack Obama, they signed this deal and won it. And by the way, big shocker, one of the movies they're facing backlash for has a warning about white people. It's called Leave the World Behind. There is a scene in the movie which warns about white people, people on Twitter, people on TikTok, people all over the internet. Claims the scene demonizes white people. The scene in question shows a black couple lying in bed as the lines. I'm asking you to remember that if the world falls apart, trust should not be doled out easily to, to anyone, especially white people. So that's what they're producing on Netflix? Give me a break. No wonder the co-founder of Netflix donated $7 million to that super PAC uh, supporting the Harris campaign. And then Michelle Obama, she's the th world's third highest paid author in 2019. Barack Obama and, and uh, his wife, Michelle got a $65 million joint advance for their memoirs. Granted. I mean, it's just completely weird. You have Michelle Obama seen snorkeling around with shirtless Tom Hanks on their $250 million super yacht. Without Michelle Obama, she just leaves her husband. You know that kind of funny about that movie called Leave the World Behind? Michelle must be used to that because story of her life is leave your husband behind. She goes off on these lavish vacations with these liberal elites in her bathing suit and Barack Obama is absolutely nowhere to be seen with shirtless Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg on on aboard their 250 million dollar super yacht. I mean this is just completely disgusting that you would just want to leave your husband behind. 
<laughs> kind of funny. But yeah, this super yacht, apparently, allegedly, it burns uh, 200, uh, 700 liters of fuel every hour, even when it's not even moving. So all these liberal elites saying, oh yeah, we're, you know, hey, climate change, climate change. Meanwhile, 700 liters of fuel every hour, even while it's not even running. I mean, complete joke. And she goes on TV to just absolutely real... talk trash about her husband. Um, did you, I don't know if you guys have heard of, heard this, but she just talks complete trash about her husband on TV. Listen to this. Realized your marriage. They sit there and look at it. But you have always been very clear and very honest that marriage takes work. Mm -hmm. It takes daily work and that it is not always glamorous and you have had some very unique strains, but there's also the strains that any of us who are in a relationship or married phase, whether it be whose career goes first yeah, or who right. takes on the childcare labor. Is there one piece of advice that you would give for people who are thinking about how you put in that work for a partnership that's yeah. lasted that long? Yeah, it's not really one piece of advice. It's To me, it's a philosophy. It's an outlook. Um, you know, in, in this age of we want everything now, we want everything quick, we, you know, when life is everything but that. We have to understand that marriage is never 50-50. Um, and, you know, you, you sort of wonder how that idea kind of got out there. Um, I have found that if you stick with it, you know, over the course of your entire relationship, you may have 50-50 over time. Mm -hmm. But if I look over my marriage, if I were to judge it in year five or year 10, there was never 50-50. Somebody was always giving way more. Look at that hairline. That It's almost like a receding hairline. Someone always needed a different kind of thing. You have to evolve with it. Um, and so, yeah, there were times when I felt like I was 70% in and he was doing 30%. So she's going on TV to absolutely talk trash about her husband. Say, oh yeah, I'm putting 70% in, only 30%. Meanwhile, she's on Steven Spielberg's super yacht ditching her husband. I mean, Barack Obama, I kind of feel bad for the guy. Had your wife Michelle on the show, and she had mentioned that for about 10 years of the marriage, she really didn't like you. Oh, man. Um, so, asking for a friend, um, how do you get back in good graces? <laughs> Again, for a friend. <laughs> yeah, your wife doesn't even effing like you, brother. <laughs> yeah, your wife didn't like you for 10 years. How do, how do you deal with that? It's humiliation guys this is humiliation absolutely humiliating. I don't know why people go on these shows to talk about this stuff and now take a look at this Michelle Obama I'm gonna pull up the clip she said for 10 years I didn't even like my husband I couldn't even stand my husband for 10 years she said that hey, Mrs. Obama your perk for 10 years well, I couldn't stand my husband. Yeah. You, you know, do say that. You <laughs> say that. years. And guess when it happened? When those kids were little. Right? When those dang kids were little. She talks about, you know, people look up to her like she's this heroic leader of her household. For 10 years, she didn't like her husband. And it was when her kids were little. That is slightly concerning. This is not somebody we want and we should be looking towards to, you know, help out, help out our country and really be in, oh, endorsing Kamala Harris. Oh yeah, that's great news. It's like, these people suck, absolutely suck. Uh, I did want to play this clip. This was uh, about the Obama family chef that was found dead near Martha's Vineyard, George the Storch, George Stephalopoulos. It turned out in the tragedy of the Obama stayed in Martha's Vineyard. When the family chef was found dead, the Obamas were not there at the time. We're learning more about what happened. DeMarco Morgan has the details. Good morning, DeMarco. Good morning, guys. Talk about a tragedy here. The husband and, and father of two went missing about 100 feet offshore Sunday evening. His body wouldn't be recovered until the following day. The Obamas saying they now joined the victim's family and those who knew him in grieving the loss of Tafari Campbell. African-American male on a paddleboard. No life preserver. This morning, tragedy unfolding near the Obama family. So by the way, I mean, just quick side note. It says Af African American male on a paddleboard. So, so my question is like, I mean, I, I do, I go paddleboarding. I mean, maybe he was attached to the leash. No life preserver. This morning, tragedy unfolding near the Obama family's Martha's Vineyard estate. Police recovering the body of 45-year-old Tafari Campbell, a beloved personal chef and friend of the former president and first lady. 
The call for help came in Sunday evening for the missing paddleboarder, who witnesses tell police was last seen wearing all black before they eventually lost eye contact with him. I mean, I go paddleboarding all the time. I, I bought a couple paddleboards uh, about a month or two ago. And it's like probably the easiest activity you could you could do. Unless it's like extremely windy. A 40 year old male, possible drowning. Campbell's paddleboard and hat would surface, but no sign of Campbell. Then the unimaginable. The husband and father of two found a dead 100 feet from shore at a depth of about eight feet in the Edgartown Great Pond. Police say divers found his body by deploying a side scan sonar from a boat. Campbell first worked as a sous chef for the Obamas at the White House. And to keep it under lock and key. Seen here brewing beer in this White House video. What you do is we take the beer bottle. Now authorities investigating the drowning. Campbell was on the vineyard visiting. The Obamas were not there at the time of the incident. Mr. and Mrs. Obama released a statement calling him a warm, fun, extraordinary, kind person who made all of our lives a little brighter, adding he was a talented sous chef at the White House. He's been part of our lives ever since, and our hearts are broken that he's gone. Campbell is survived by his wife and their twin boys. The couple's Instagram posts over the years showing their close relationship and tight-knit family. So sad. So, so sad. Absolutely tragic. Absolutely tragic. Now, I wanted to actually tune in to Michelle Obama. She actually gave a speech talking crap about Trump. I couldn't believe my eyes. Listen to this. It's a hard time, and everyone's feeling it in different ways. So let me be as honest and clear as I possibly can. Donald Trump is the wrong president for our country. Oh my gosh! And... Wait, what? Was that actually... Wait, was that actually while Trump was president she said that? He has had more than enough time to prove that he can do the job, but he is clearly in over his head. I do not like Michelle. I didn't know that she was so against Donald Trump, like so vocally, publicly, which now, now guys, I actually am putting two and two together because Michelle Obama, when Donald Trump was almost assassinated, she did not say anything. Um, all she did was repost her husband. At least Barack had the decency to share, um, you know, a statement. At least Barack Obama did, right? And it was even the same day. But Michelle, she just, she just goes, ah, I'll just repost it. It's like, that woman sucks. Absolutely sucks. Wow. This woman is, makes me sick. Makes my blood boil. I cannot, cannot tell you any more about that guys so anyways let me know your thoughts with this guys but as of now michelle obama as we can see here she will not be running for president 2024 and they have endorsed kamala harris but we don't know kamala harris could end up picking her as her vp um but yeah so i'm pretty sure there's i'm pretty sure i'm i was trying to understand the process if anybody else can run against Kamala Harris, I don't understand the process, so I will keep you guys up to date as I learn more. But let me know your thoughts on all this, guys. Take care, and God bless.